Hemostatic agents are agents that arrest bleeding via vasoconstriction or by promoting coagulation of the blood. The hemostatic agents can be of two types, those that act locally and the others which act systemically. The local acting hemostatics are used to control the bleeding from small vessels and capillaries, for example, those in tooth extraction, abrasions, epistaxis, or bleeding during surgical procedures. While systemically acting hemostatics can be used to control the bleeding that is associated with some blood disorders such as hemophilia or von Willebrand disease and deficiencies like vitamin K deficiency, hypoprothrombinemia or poisoning such as salicylate poisoning. Locally acting hemostatics will externally stop the bleeding while systemically acting will enter the system and promote the coagulation cascade. We'll discuss first the locally acting hemostatics. First will be adrenaline, second is astringents, thirdly thrombin, fibrin, gelatin, calcium alginate, oxidized cellulose, and heme coagulase. First we'll see how all these hemostatics act. Adrenaline will of course cause alpha-1 vasoconstriction and thus stop the bleeding. Astringents will precipitate the proteins locally and stop the bleeding. Thrombin will convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin itself has fibrinogen, factor 8, thrombin, calcium and other clotting factors and thus will contribute to the coagulation and clot formation. Gelatin will provide a physical meshwork on which clotting can occur and it is absorbable. Calcium alginate will provide the calcium for clot formation. It is also absorbable and it also promotes wound healing. Oxidized cellulose will be applied dry but then it will swell up and provide a surface for coagulation. It is also absorbable. And heme coagulase is basically an enzyme which will convert fibrinogen to insoluble fibrin and thus promote clot formation. Adrenaline, astringents, thrombin, fibrin, gelatin, calcium alginate and oxidized cellulose can be given topically while hemocoagulase will be given IM, IV and subcutaneously. Now, adrenaline should not be given in patients with hypertension, congestive heart failure, cardiac arrhythmias, ischemic heart disease, and in uncontrolled hyperthyroidism because it can precipitate MI, and thrombin should not be injected. That were two contraindications of two of the locally acting hemostatics. Now, some side effects. Firstly, Thrombin will cause hypersensitivity reactions while the oxidized cellulose will cause tissue necrosis, nerve damage and vascular stenosis. Just to mention, calcium alginate promotes wound healing. Oxidized cellulose is used where ligation is not possible and hemocoagulase is very very powerful and it will decrease the bleeding time and the clotting time. Coming to the systemically acting hemostatics, we'll discuss six of them here. First is vitamin K, second is fibrinogen, thirdly anti-hemophilic factor, fourthly adrenochrome monosemicarbazone, that's a long name, ethamsylate and lastly desmopressin. First, we'll see how all of these systemically acting hemostatics work. Vitamin K, as you know, is required for the synthesis of clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. It basically acts as a cofactor for gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid residues of these clotting factors. Fibrinogen will, of course, form fibrin, 
Anti-hemophilic factor actually consists of factor 8 and von Willebrand factor and thus will contribute to the coagulation and clot formation. Adrenochrome monosemi carbazones mechanism is not clear. Ethamsylate will correct the abnormal platelet adhesion and stabilize the vessel wall. Desmopressin is a vasopressin analog and thus vasoconstrictor. Vitamin K can be given orally, IV and subcutaneously. Fibrinogen is given in an IV infusion and so is anti-hemophilic factor. Adrenochrome monosemicarbazone is given orally and IV. Ethamsalate is given oral and IV while desmopressin should be given as a slow IV infusion. Now among the three forms of vitamin K, K1, K2 and K3, K1 is the most safe to use. It is derived from plants and animal sources. K2 is formed by the colonic bacteria and K3 is a synthetic form with the most side effects. K1 can be used in bleeding associated with vitamin K deficiency such as that in obstructive jaundice, prolonged antimicrobial therapy. It is given routinely in units. Uh, it can be given in salicylate poisoning, etc. The fibrinogen is basically a human plasma derivative. It can be used to control the bleeding associated with hypofibrinogenemia. Lastly, some side effects. As I mentioned that K3 was the most side effect causing vitamin K form. It basically causes flushing, cyanosis, dyspnea and anaphylactic reaction. So we should not use K3 form that is menadione should not be used while vitamin K1 also known as phytonadione should be used. Anti-hemophilic factor also causes some side effects such as chills, headache, rash, etc. Lastly, adrenochrome monosemicarbazone causes side effects such as skin rash, low blood pressure and headache. That's all about hemostatic agents.